Hi, I'm Connor Hallam. With me, as always, is my co-host, Chris Thomas, and we are the Sports Nuts. Let's get right into it this week. Uh, March Madness still in full swing. We did our post-election Sunday special last week. We were, I'd say, pretty good on our calls for the first round. Both of our locks came in. He had Cincy, I had Michigan. I still haven't had a lock of the week that's been wrong, by the way. Um, he also called SMU because he got overconfident. Did Shut two up. locks of the week for Shut no reason. Mouth. Nobody told him to. Shut he your just, mouth. I'm feeling this I was, confident. I love SMU this year. I was confident, okay? By the way. And they blew it. I would like to point out, I was going to say we'll pull up the sound, but we won't. Last week when he called SMU as his lock of the week, I said, you know, USC could win their playing game and beat SMU. And that's exactly what happened. Well, sorry that they choked, okay? <laughs> it's cool. I also fun. talked up Vermont for like 10 minutes. Yeah. And Vermont lost. And they lost by 20. They lost by 10, but it was a close game the whole way. Um, <laughs> Whatever you say. Anyway, the talk of the round of 32, obviously Duke getting upset by South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> Big fan of that? Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Um, I, who is the guard from South Carolina? Sundarius Thornwell, yeah. I think his yeah, name is. Yeah, that's his name. He's a savage. I love, <laughs> I love that kid. I'll tell you what. I picked Marquette against them in the first round. Obviously, in the second round, I didn't have that game. I but, also had Marquette. But if I did, I would have picked Duke, clearly. But they're a much better team than you think. They struggled a little bit down the stretch, so they got a seven seed. But early in the season, people were talking highly of them, and I see why. Um, so I just got to, like, I hate to do this. I don't hate to do it because I'm not a Coach K guy. But I'm going to put this blame squarely on Coach K. Not for the loss, uh, but for the whole situation that they're in. See, he second-guessed himself. And when you're one of the greatest coaches of all time, the winningest college basketball coach of all time, you can't second-guess yourself. He knew early in the season. He had it figured out. He realized – this team isn't a normal Duke team. They're not going places. So we pulled the classic Coach K, fake a back injury, did a fake back surgery at the Duke mm-hmm. Hospital. Fake back surgery, yeah. The surgery was real, but the the, the reasoning for it was fake because he realized the team was no good. He could distance himself. Then Luke Kennard starts playing like a savage, and he's like, oh, this team could win. This team could go places. So he goes, oh, the back's feeling pretty good. I can come back to coaching. I can coach the rest of this whole season. That's where he made his mistake. Don't second guess yourself. His intuition was right. His team wasn't going places. He should have distanced himself. No matter what happened in the tournament, everyone would have been like, well, they didn't have Coach K, so you can't fault him. But, you know, he really, uh, he, he hung his players out to dry by coming back, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that's my take on Coach K in the tournament. Uh, what else happened? Anything else great in March Madness? Uh, well, Villanova lost. And I had them winning the tournament. That was a big one. So I'm out of every single bracket pool I was in. Nigel Hayes is one of my favorite players in the country. I actually wanted to ask you. He's my pick, by the way, for this question. Um, Every year in March Madness, we see some player capture the nation's attention. It was Shabazz Napier a couple years ago. Kemba, also from UConn a few years before that. Plenty of you guys have done it. Um, You know, Jimmer had the one year. Dougie McBuckets. Who's, Who's your guy for this tournament? It might be Nigel Hayes, just that's, because of the state. That's what I was going to say. You know what I see him like, and not in their gameplay at all, but the way that they could do this? Ron Baker. You know, the next guard who used to play for Wichita Ron, State. Ron is my boy. Yeah. You, with you, the blonde hair. Exactly. And he he was on an under underrated team, exactly where Wisconsin is. He was a senior his last year doing it. Obviously, he was a senior. There for four years. Nigel Hayes is a senior who has been talked about his whole career, and I think that in that way they can he could be the exact same type of guy in the tournament. I think on the court they're very different. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, Nigel Hayes is a banger down low, and uh, you know Ron Baker's a small white dude. But yeah, but other than he's, that, he's great though. He's yeah. a great small white dude. <laughs> he is. Yeah, I mean he's playing professional basketball, which not many of us can say. As a small white dude. Uh, you know who else is on is playing professional basketball? Who's also a white dude? Marshall Plumley. That whole thing. <laughs> you, you want to get in on this? Not really. But. Dude's his whole thing. 
was that he's going to the Navy. He's not going to the NBA. He's not following his brother's footsteps. He's doing ROTC at Duke. He's going straight to the Navy. All of a sudden, he turns up on an NBA roster. And I'm like, what? Did yeah. he fail out of the Navy or something? And they're like, no, he just he just took that NBA money, which is the right move, obviously. It's a smart play, but when you stay for four <laughs> years of college, I'm going to the Navy. I'm not trying to play professional basketball. When you play professional basketball, it's not a good look. Yeah, every time I see him, too, he's getting dunked on. Oh, yeah, he's terrible. I don't know how he's still on the Knicks. Yeah, well, they're trash. That's true. Um, other fallout from the tournament so far, is the ACC terribly overrated all season? I believe I said this in the last episode, and you disagreed with me. I said the ACC is overrated, and they should not have as many teams in the tournament. I will give you that you said that, and I disagreed. And I want, you know, I want to jump to defend the ACC because I think they're a great Great conference, obviously. The best, I still think. Maybe the Pac-12 is better this year. But it's... So on the one hand, I'll say, this is what happens in a single elimination tournament. You lose a game that you probably shouldn't, and you're out. That's it. So you can, your whole conference can look bad or good when they're not actually... People are not saying, is the Big Ten an amazing conference? Usually, yes. This year, no. But Michigan and Wisconsin got hot at the right time. Purdue had a very easy walkthrough to the Sweet 16 where they're probably going to get killed by Kansas. Maybe not, though. Swanigan's the real deal. Yeah. Um, so, that's all I'll say. It's a single elimination tournament. But they do look a lot worse than people thought. Louisville looked horrible against Michigan. I picked Michigan to win that game. I've got Michigan in the Final Four, so I, you know, I was a believer. But basically the whole ACC has looked terrible. Duke lost to South Carolina. Duke gave up the most points they've ever given up in a half with yeah. Krzyzewski as the coach. Thousands of halves. Literally thousands with him as the coach. And they gave up the most points they've ever given up. And then after the game, you know what he said about it? South Carolina's got one of the toughest defenses we've played all year. I mean, really just a stingy defense. I said, you gave up 65 <laughs> points in a half in college basketball. That's your defense being terrible. They just couldn't contain Cinderia. I guess that's what it was. Um, all right, so now I was thinking we we swing it to a new segment that we've never done before on the air. Um, we don't really have a name for it yet, but just kind of a bracket type in the style of March Madness, lining two things up against each other and seeing who comes out the winner. So as a viewer, as a baseball fan that I know you are, World Baseball Classic on right now, we're doing this instead of watching it, or Spring Training, what did what do you want to watch more? Well, I would say neither because I really only care about baseball to get them to a regular season. But I guess I'd have to go with spring training just because our team that we both root for, the Phillies, they're up and coming. They got a lot of young guys, and we have to like see if they're legit or not. We have to see if they can possibly turn it. I definitely feel that. I, I get excited at the beginning of spring training every year, see the new guys on the roster and whatnot. I end up watching like three, four spring training games, and it's boring and lame, and the pitchers only pitch like two yeah. innings or something. It's terrible. So I don't like it. I would also pick neither if I had to. Well, that's not true because I watch some spring training, but mostly I'd pick neither. But the World Baseball Classic, I've never even watched it. I don't care at all. It's a bunch of players that – like if if the U.S. wanted to win it, we would just go out and win it and like send our best pitchers. None of our good pitchers go. The pitchers who do go pitch like two innings, like it's a spring training game. It's whatever. It's fine. It's good that they have it. It's great because baseball's an international sport, and other countries care a lot about the World Baseball Classic. It's just not our thing. It's like when America's in the World Cup. I don't care to watch because soccer is not our thing. Some people get really big about America being in the World Cup. I know you do, but yeah. what they should do is just bring baseball back into it. That's exactly what they should do. I and agree. it would get more hype. Yep. No World Baseball Classic. First of all, terrible name because it's there's nothing classic about it. But you can still have it. It's just all right. ha having a the Olympics. All right, hit me with a verse. Deshaun Watson versus Mitchell Trubisky. What's All your right. take on that? Both being in the ACC, I'm a Miami football fan. I've gotten to see them both play a decent amount because uh, I watch a lot of ACC football. And I, 
there was a time when I said Mitch Trubisky's overrated. He's don't, not don't, really. It's don't a down you go quarterback. Where I think you're he's going a down. Right now. It's a down quarterback class, and he's pretty good. But I have to go with Deshaun Watson. Thank you. You know, I've got this thing that, for whatever reason, professional sports general managers don't seem to believe in, even though it's 100 percent real. Some guys are winners, and some guys aren't. And Deshaun Watson, I mean, he's the definition of a winner. Started for like his entire college career and done nothing but win. What does he have? Like three losses in four years? Something like that. It's crazy. It's really absurd. I mean, won the national championship this last year. Basically wins every game every season. And they're like, oh, well, you know, I don't know about his accuracy when he rolls out in the pocket. I'm like, I don't care if he's inaccurate when he rolls out. If he wins the game still, yeah. if he's going to win me games, that's who I want as my quarterback. If he if he can't throw a spiral at all, if he throws ducks every time, but he wins, I'll take that guy over Jay Cutler, beautiful spiral going right to the other team. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. People say Watson has an interception problem. So that, that can be fixed, I think. <laughs> they're, they're not all his fault. Yeah, I, I mean, just don't think Trubisky is proved enough. Yeah, I mean, let's put it this way. Trubisky was a fifth-year senior. It's his first year starting. Four years of college, he couldn't get a starting job. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then Deshaun Watson goes out and wins a championship. They're like, eh, let's take this guy. His, his, his team was yeah. okay. You know what, though? I will say it's going to be very interesting what happens. I swear Mel Kiper Jr. is just screwing with everybody. Every time he releases a new mock draft, new one today, he just flip flops to Sean Watson or Mitch Trubisky. Who's going first? I saw a mock draft today. It wasn't by Mel Kiper, but they had Patrick Mahomes as the first quarterback off the board. He's actually soaring. It was a three man race with Kaiser Watson and Trubisky. Now they're saying it's a two man race with Ky- with Deshaun Watson and uh, Trubisky, but Mahomes has passed Deshaun Kaiser. Which, I don't know why Kaiser didn't go back to school, but I wouldn't want to play on that Notre Dame he, team he again. he start to lose his starting job? Is that what it is? Uh, could be. I mean, I think that was more of uh, what, happened, what you see in the NFL all the time. Season goes bad. Maybe the coach is on the outs. All of a sudden, you know, our quarterback's been terrible. We need to start looking at other quarterback options. Yeah. Yeah. Look at any coach who's losing his job in the NFL. He's benching that quarterback to see to see what happens with the backup. Uh, but, no, I mean, I think Kaiser's an ex- incredibly athletic, talented kid. I think he should go back to school, though. Now they're talking too about late, man. I mean, yeah, it's too late. Um, so I guess we don't need to talk <laughs> about that. All right. Um, I don't think we need to do any more of these. This is an interesting segment. We'll see if we keep it. I, I, I have one more. You have one more? All right. Line it up doesn't necessarily have to do with sports, but you got to pick one. Backstreet Boys or Instinct. Now, for those of you watching who don't know, I'm a huge boy band fan. Um, Not One Direction. I don't like them at all for whatever reason. I thought maybe it was I just don't like new boy bands, but Uh, you know know I'm a Big Time Rush fan. Huge Big Time Rush fan. So I think it's just them. but, uh, But yeah, anyway, back to the original question. I think... Body of work, overall body of work, you got to go with the Backstreet Boys. Single song? You know, it's I'm going, insane. You know it's in sync. I was going to say let's play it, but we'd have to get up we and have, dance. And we'd and also have copyright issues. That's true. That's a thing. I think you can play like a snippet for yeah. 30 seconds. But anyway, I was going to say, we both have to dance because when that song comes on, you can't not. And I'm not trying to lose all of our viewers. Uh, I think they would love to see you bust a move to JT. I, I mean, first of all, it's in sync. It's before he was solo. All right, let's not give him all the credit. Second of all, I think they would love to see me bust a move. I just don't know if they'd like to see your one move that you use to every <laughs> single song. It's his fire move. I'm though. actually jealous of this guy. He has no, I have like 10 dance moves and they're all trash. He has one, works for every song, and I can't get the timing down, so I can't do it. But meet this guy at a wedding. At like the junior prom or something, he's busting out his one move on every song, and nobody notices that it's the same move. The they think he's prom. just, they think he's just good at dancing. Yeah, it's a high quality move and easy to do too. Uh, not for me, except for him, because he he doesn't understand how to move the hips. 
Anyway, I say we uh, we swing it over to your arena, the NBA. A lot has been made out of this player sitting thing. Adam Silver sent an email to all the owners, which, by the way, we'll get into it. But what kind of move is that? Send an email like. They're all they're basically screwing over the fans and their TV partners, and that's how he's gonna deal with it. Hey guys, uh, you might want to check this out. Like everybody's sitting, people don't like this. They want to see LeBron James play. They don't want to see LeBron James on the bench and James Jones get like thirty minutes. So. James Jones is amazing. I love James. Jones. I would pay money to see James Jones play thirty. Minutes. I have paid money to see James <laughs> Jones play, but all I'm saying is that's as a fan. You go to a you go to a Cavs game, especially they do this on the road. They don't do it at home, which I get. Their fans they don't want to do it to, but their fans are the people who get the chance to see them. LeBron James when he comes to another city, that's what people that's he sells out every arena. Even the Nets, the worst team in basketball, they sell out when LeBron comes because people want to see LeBron James play. There's also Cavs fans in those other cities. Yeah, shout exactly. out to all you bandwagoners out there. True, bandwagoners everywhere. Um, anyway, so that's just, that's where I stand on that from a fan perspective, and their TV sponsors have to be ridiculously mad. Mm -hmm. You know, the NBA uh, salary cap went up crazy. Everybody's making incredible money now. Mike Conley, the highest paid highest player paid in the history of the NBA. The history. Yeah, Mike Conley's like pretty good, maybe even great, but not on the level of the best players in the NBA. But everybody gets to make that money now because of this new deal, which is in, enacted for 10 years. And as soon as the deal gets enacted, all these Saturday major primetime games that TNT gets that they promote with the ridiculous little John turned down for what ads, which I'll get into that in a second. They're ridiculous. Oh, but all those games that they want to make all the money off of, all of a sudden, Golden State playing San Antonio two weeks ago. You know what would be awesome? What I would love to see the two best teams in the Western Conference who are duking it out for a number one spot to go at it going into the playoffs. What'd they do? Spurs rested two players. The Warriors rested four players. Of course, they were the Spurs' two best players and the Warriors' mm -hmm. four superstars. And so nobody got to see a good game. We got to see terrible bench players. The game, it, it felt like it meant nothing, even though it should mean the most. It was, it was terrible. It's actually getting close between the, the one and two seed. It is, yeah. And then LeBron goes and, you know, he wants to sit out in L.A. So does Kyrie. Kevin Love coming back from the injury. Comes back after four weeks off, plays a game, and then has to sit for a rest? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's ridiculous. Four years ago in the NBA, this is an actual stat, there were 19 DNP rests. That means did not play due to rest. This year... 146. At that rate, we're on pace for over 300 next year. When is it too much? I mean, it's already too much, but when are the players going to think it's too much? Uh, well, yeah, James Harden and Russell Westbrook recently said, I want to play. Don't sit me out. This is my job. I'm coming to do my job That's every what we day. need more of. And you know what? Treating it like a job is what every player should be doing. And the way that the NBA could fix this, which they never will, uh, is if they divided your salary by the amount of games that you played, if you were injured, you still got paid because you can't control that. Mm -hmm. But if you want a night off, because it's not the coaches saying, hey, we need to rest you. It's the players saying, I'm taking a night off. And when LeBron says, I'm taking a night off, Ty Lue can't really do anything about that. Yeah. So if they said... LeBron runs that show. Exactly. If they said, oh, you know, you only get paid if you play. How many more people would play? LeBron probably doesn't care. He's got the $500 million Nike deal and all of the money he's made over his career. He's fine, but Kyrie's only 24. He's only been in the league for a little while. Mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't know how much longer it's going to be. He's got some injury you know, history. Maybe, maybe Kyrie decides, hey, I'm only 24. I don't need to rest. Yeah. Which is the next point is that LeBron said nobody cared when Pop did it. You know, I think LeBron has this whole mentality, and I don't dislike the guy, and I hate to come across like a LeBron hater, but he has this whole mentality that it's kind of like everybody's against him almost, and it's it's like the Boogie Cousins mentality, except not nearly as bad as it is with Boogie, is that 
he you know he goes off and says nobody cared when Pop did it with the Spurs, but now that it's me, everybody cares, and that's not true. Pop and the Spurs got fined for doing it when they did it, and they did it with Tim Duncan, who is ancient. Yeah, all right. Kyrie's twenty four <laughs> years old. What does a twenty four year old need rest for? In a week, by the way, where they had three scheduled rest days, they just took a fourth day because they wanted it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It seems to me like it's a status thing now. Like, like, oh, these guys are sitting out. I'm a, I'm a baller on my team. I'm gonna sit. Like testing your coach. You know, this Damian Lillard gone. I'm I'm pretty big deal. Do I get to sit? I mean, I don't know. I that's just me looking at it from the outside. Anyway. I mentioned I was going to talk about the Lil John thing before we got out of the NBA. What are they doing with these commercials? Every commercial is like, it's just Lil John comes on, they're playing Turn Down for What? And he's like, What? What? Turn Down for the most exciting duo in the history of the NBA. First of all, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to turn down for that? If you're yeah. TNT, you want people hype about the games. It's not turn down for Steph and Clay. Like, it's turn up for them. Yeah, it's not the same thing as turn down for what. Yeah. So that's like, why would I turn down? Yeah, exactly. This is like, he's telling you to to not be hyped for these games. I know. And, like, nobody seems to get, I don't, I don't know who's running things over at TNT, but those ads need to stop. Yeah. Uh, they're not very good. No, they're, they weren't, they wouldn't be good ads if they made sense. But they Will John sense. also, not very good. Yeah, no, Lil John. I don't understand I would, how he's made so much money. I would call him an overrated rapper, but I don't think anyone rates him highly. I don't think he he raps either. I think he just yeah. yells. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's about all I have. Sorry, on the little John, if you're watching. Unless you want to talk about the Serge Ibaka Robin Lopez thing. Yeah, I mean, they got they got fired up. That's for sure. A lot of people have been getting fired up lately. In a lot the of the NBA has been getting real feisty this last. The month. Brandon Jennings Terry Rozier thing with the Celtics Wizards. Just yeah. becoming a great rivalry. Oh, like, yeah. Like, oh, which yeah. Which the East needs. They the East does. They don't Actually, have a lot of those. You know what? Like, I hate to be this guy, but the East is better than the West right now. They are. It's true. Better from a basketball perspective and much more fun to watch. Um, but anyway, yeah. We had Russ and Steph going at it a little bit the other night, which I think would be hilarious. Set off by Samaj Christian. <laughs> My yeah, boy. that was that was hilarious. <laughs> Was the thing Russ wasn't even in it, and then he just got in it. But that, I think it would be hilarious if nobody stepped in between them to see what would happen. Like, would Steph still try to act big? Or like, I'm a Steph Curry fan, but he, you know, if he's going up against Russ, like, yeah, Russ is gonna destroy. Him. Russ, is, first of all, Russ is a big dude. Steph is not that big. Steph's kind of like somebody made the comparison. Steph's the Drake of the NBA. E. Like, he's really good, but he's also really soft. But he plays in this league. Drake, like, is in the rap game where you have to act hard. So Drake's, like, got all these lyrics about, like, murder and stuff. But, like, he was a, like, child actor yeah. in Canada. Degrassi. Yeah, exactly. He he, he didn't grow he up did in the He did get shot, like, though, in Degrassi. <laughs> in a TV he show. Got, he, look, look, he did get shot. That's, that's, that's what Steph came up with, like. I was like, I grew up in the hood. Steph was like, I wore hoodies. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, quick quick note about Samaj Christian. Fun well, fact, his first name is just James backwards. That, I mean, I don't know if it's I don't know fun if, of a fact. I don't know if that's why his name is Samaj, but... It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else? I think we were going to... Oh, yeah, great new, another new segment. Two new segments rolled out in the same episode. We'll see about this one also, see how it plays. All right, so we're calling this one, I don't know if we have a name for it, but basically the game is we'll say something in sports and the other person has to guess the emoji that we're associating with it. Um, so I'll start. I hate to harp on him again, but Coach K would do it. Is there also, a, I never hate to harp on him. But is there a rat emoji? You read my mind. That's right where I was going. <laughs> the rat face. The, the he, rat face. He Coach looks K. exactly like a rat. Like We're not going to edit it because it'll take forever, but <laughs> on your phone right now, pull up a side-by-side. -side. 
of Coach K and a rat. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, it was Gwen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Minus all the hair. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go with my boy, Nick Stauskas. Shout out Sauce Castillo. Yeah. We do it once every episode. All right, so there's a lot of ways you can go with this. Um, if there's a hot sauce emoji, I think there's a sriracha bottle maybe. You know, he's Sauce Castillo. Mm-hmm. Um, would make so you, sense. You, would, you could go with that, but you're not going to go with that because I know you too well. You could go with the flames emoji because his game is fire. I could, I could. But that's not what you're doing either. So many different ways you can do that. You know what you're doing? You're going with the goat emoji because he's the greatest of <laughs> all time. He's the goat. That's spot on. It's true. He is the greatest of all time. He's the Canadian goat for sure. Best yeah, Canadian yeah. player of all time. Sorry, Get out of here, Andrew Wiggins. Sorry, Nash. Sorry, Wiggins. Sorry, Ennis Brothers. Yeah. Anybody else have to apologize brothers. to? Those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Best Canadian of all time. I'm going to go goat white guy of all time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Move over obviously, to Larry Bird. Obviously, he's not a better player than Bird. Obviously, he's not a better player than Dirk. I don't know if we're counting that as a white guy because he's foreign. But he's, 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 Stauskas yeah. is also foreign. So he's yeah, also a white guy. All right. Obviously, he's not better than those guys, but just everything he brings to the team. The, he brings I mean, team chem. The, the team chem is way up when he's on the court. I mean, just everything. He's a locker room guy. He's the glue that holds the team together. He is Sauce Castillo. So, go. It's a pretty easy one. We hope to have him on this podcast one. Or to get on his podcast. I'm Sauce good with Company. Great podcast. Check it out. Um, Just uploaded a video of TJ McConnell. My second favorite sixer. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's that's good for that segment. We want to do two a piece, or no, we're good? No, nah, we're good. All right. Let's kick it over to the NFL. Um, you heard about the Brady thing, right? Yeah. Yeah? You want to fill him in a little bit? I think you know better than I do. All right. About this. So basically, Tom Brady's Super Bowl jersey that has been missing has been found. It's found. I guess they their their initial reports were that they found it on the guy, but apparently he's still on the run from the law. So I guess they found it at his home. A uh, credentialed member of the international media. Now, apparently, this was his thing, like his move, because this wasn't all they found. They found Von Miller's Super Bowl helmet. And another one of Brady's Super Bowl jerseys. They found two Brady Super Bowl jerseys from different Super Bowls at this dude's crib. And, like, apparently that was just his move. Use the press pass to get in the locker room and then just take stuff and leave. Yeah, it's a great plan. Yeah. You know what? If you're, like, a criminal, like, that's the heist. That was a great, great plan until everybody started making a big deal about the jersey being missing this year. Also, I was very upset when I found out. I was so hoping that it was, like, a practice squad quarterback who was like, oh, that'd be so cool if I had Tom Brady's Super Bowl jersey. Like, he's just going to get it washed by, like, the maintenance crew. Like, I I can just grab it. And then he woke up the next morning, and everyone was like, the jersey's missing, jersey gate. And he was like, oh, yeah, who took that? We should find him. Yeah. But, no, apparently it was this dude who, like, is, like, a professional thief slash actual international credentialed media member. So... Everything just becomes a big deal once Brady comes to play. You said he had Von Miller's jersey. I never heard that that got stolen. That's true. I never right. heard a peep about Von Miller's Super Bowl helmet being missing. But yeah. Also, here's what I want to know. How'd they know it was Von Miller's? Everybody on the Broncos' helmet looks the same. There's I mean, no they numbers had, on they the had helmet. his jersey, it probably says Miller on the back. They didn't. They just had his helmet is what I'm saying. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I guess, Maybe I guess he reported it missing. Maybe they have stick-on numbers. Maybe. Maybe it said Miller on the inside. Also, I want to know, what is what is the punishment for this? Because it can't be that serious. Yeah, this dude's apparently, he's still on the lam. He's running from the law. But, like... It's a, it's a shirt. It's an important shirt, but it's a shirt. I mean, what? I mean, how bad could it be? It's not like he's going to... What, is he going to run for the rest of his life? Like, yeah, I don't know. Also, guess who busted him? Guess who busted him? The FBI. This was an FBI investigation to find Brady's missing Super Bowl jersey. Yeah, I feel so, like yeah. you, you have better things to be involved yeah. in, more yeah. serious things. If you pay taxes in the U.S., that's what your taxpayer dollars are going to, looking for Brady's Super Bowl jersey. Just just investigating that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and 
I watched the video of the the guys who found them, and they were like, basically saying like, messed with the wrong people. Like, we don't let anything slide. I'm like, do you not see the irony of the fact that you're saying that about this when you spent months investigating this instead of investigating real crimes? Mm -hmm. We don't let anything slide except for like drug trafficking and murder and stuff because we're looking for the Super Bowl jersey. But we didn't let the Super Bowl jersey slide. Yeah. Ugh. Um, a couple other free agency things in the NFL. Manti Teo looks like he's closing in a deal with the Saints. Tore his ACL last year, or his Achilles. I, I tore something know. last year. Missed like most of the season. But he's he had, great, a, had a player. low key good rookie season too. He, he did. Was with the yeah, no, he was a, he was a great college player. Pretty good pro so far. So that's a good deal for the Saints. I hope he can meet a nice real one. <laughs> a nice real girl. Orleans. No, no more catfishes no. for Manti Teo. Um, what else? Sean Spence signed with the Colts. Um, I think he's a really good, really underrated linebacker. He he blew up his knee his rookie year, like tore all four ligaments. The ones that cross, the ones that go on the side, terrible. One of the worst NFL injuries ever. But he's back. He had he was third in his team on tackles for tackles last year. He's playing with the Titans, so I think that's a good acquisition for them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just, that's just news. Nothing really to talk about. Um, what else do we have? Oh, this is a big one. Everybody wants to talk about Spike Lee posted an Instagram the other day with Colin Kaepernick. And he was something – his caption was something to the effect of 32 NFL teams and nobody can sign this man. Seems fishy to me because Kaepernick has been protesting by kneeling during the national anthem, not standing for a lot of injustices that he – you know, that he sees in the country, uh, racial injustices, things like that. And people are saying, well, every NFL owner, if you line them up, you can hardly tell them apart because they're all old-ass, rich white dudes. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. So people are trying to make it a big race thing. Here's what I think. I think Kaepernick, first of all, he's terrible. Yeah, he, he he's, sucks. He's been bad since the Super Bowl year, which was a while ago. Three Super Bowls ago? Four. Yeah. So, it's been a while, and he's been bad ever since. Really bad last year. Blaine Gabbard outplayed him. Yeah, Blaine Gabbard outplayed him. Uh, if, if that doesn't tell you how bad he is, Blaine Gabbard outplayed him. Um, but anyway, so apparently he wants to go to a place where he can compete for the starting job. And I don't know if that situation exists anywhere in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I mean... Maybe the Jets, they just sound Josh McCown, which would make you think that that's, that's going to be their starter, but he's better than Hackenberg, who would be the other competition. Oh, the Jets. Oh, the Jets. The Waste Jets. a second-round pick on Christian Hackenberg. Let's not get into that now. But, yeah, so I think there's that. And then there's the, the aspect of, yes, the distraction of him being there is a factor for them. I don't think he's being blackballed because the distraction is – like racially fueled, I think NFL owners hate distractions in general. Yeah, it's the only reason Tim Tebow's not in the NFL because he's a distraction. There's Tebow mania. Nobody wants all the reporters at your training camp. I'm sure the Mets don't like having everybody at their spring training games because Tim Tebow's trying to make it in the MLB. Mm, I think they did that one on purpose <laughs> to get some people to buy those single A minor league game tickets. Actually, you know what? I bet they're single. He did you see? He's been assigned to their single A yeah. team. No chance of making the pros. Not even double A or triple A. And I think that's actually not a bad move because their single A team is going to sell a lot of tickets yeah. this year. I don't even know where that affiliate is, but that I city's going to be loving. I know they're called Tim the Tebow. Fireflies around that location. <laughs> so that's Fireflies. a good start. That's, that's great. But yeah, I mean, you see the same thing. Johnny Manziel. He's a distraction, and he's got other off the field things that would make you not want to. NFL owners hate distractions, so mm -hmm. I don't think it's that they hate that this is a racially fueled distraction. I think they just don't want a guy who's going to be a distraction. And here's the thing about the NFL. If you're good enough, someone will take you. Yeah. Pac-Man Jones has had multiple arrests, one with, like, a lot of cocaine, like, way more than you would think. But he's really good at football. So way more cocaine than like, the average amount of cocaine. A lot of cocaine. <laughs> and... He's really good at football, though, so he's a Bengals starting quarterback. Cornerback. Um, who else? There's plenty of guys like this. Mm -hmm. What's his name who was starting for the Cowboys who beat his wife? 
Greg Hardy. Yeah, but Greg he's Hardy. out of it now. He is, but he, good. But right after, oh yeah, he's a scumbag. We're very anti, you know, domestic abuse uh, here on the podcast. <laughs> I think everyone basically is. Uh, but yeah, he still played a full season starting with the Cowboys after that happened. Mm-hmm. And so and they see, took a lot of abuse for it. They did, but it's what a it still proves the point that it might even further the point if you're good enough. No matter what, someone will take you. And Colin Kaepernick's just not good enough. No. If he could be a starter, not even a good starter, the 32nd best starter in the NFL. He would get the lead. He would already be on a team. But. He's not doing that. He's not. And he's asking for too much money. Yeah. He's asking for, like, starter, apparently. We don't know what he's asking for because it's not public. But apparently, he's asking for starter money. And. This year, in the offseason, if you look at the acquisitions, starters aren't getting starter money. Jay Cutler's not anywhere. RG3's not anywhere. Uh, Josh McCown just signed, basically, to be the Jets starter for a low price. I mean, it's it's a down year for quarterbacks getting paid, and he wants a lot, and he's not good. Besides Mike Lennon, shout out to that guy. Yeah. How he got that contract. That's the Tristan Thompson contract of NFL contracts. He, what is it, 18 mil, right? 18 million like guaranteed that. 18 15 million. or 18. I think it's, I think 18 guaranteed. Guaranteed 18 million. Mike Glennon. I mean, he was, he was good. Kind of. He was fine. With Mike Glennon. Maybe he's the answer. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> maybe, you know, I, I was thinking there's no way Kaepernick's been blackballed. Maybe he has been, because if Mike Lennon's getting 18 mil, apparently the word on the street is Kaepernick's asking for 10. Kaepernick should be able to get half of what Mike Lennon gets, because Mike Lennon sucks. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, I haven't... Mike I... Glennon is going to be a top 15 QB this year. First of all, top 15 is half the league. Well, no, it's not. 16. I know 16, so but I was out. exaggerating, but... Fine, top 10. How about that? Top 10 QB. You want to make a bet right now? What do you want to bet? Not a lot, but I'll bet something. Whoever loses. How about the viewers can write some sort of forfeit All right. in the bottom? I got it. In the comment yeah. section. If you're a viewer of this video, comment a good bet, and we'll pick the best one. I mean... We've done some crazy bets in the past, so we'll pick the best one. And if Mike Glennon is a top 10 quarterback in the league, how are we defining this? Yards, QBR, just eyeball? Eyeball. Eyeball? Yeah. I'm telling you, if he's 10, 11, there's going to be big debate. There's going to be some debate, but then maybe we can bring in some other people. All right, yeah, we'll have an impartial judge. All right. Let's do it, man. It's going to be a while Yeah. until that happens. Yeah, that, that one won't get paid off for a while. <laughs> All right, um, I think that's – oh, it's not it for the NFL. Cam Newton, you heard oh, about yeah. that? Yeah. What's uh, – I, I don't know much about it. I'm Partially torn rotator cuff, I'm pretty sure, and they opted for surgery after rehab was not going well. So it was basically like the Ben Simmons thing. They, they tried to rehab him, realized it wasn't going to work, and went for the surgery. Yeah. Is I mean – Out for the preseason. Yeah, I heard he's out for the preseason. If everything goes right, he'll be back for the regular season. And you got to wonder now, because I heard apparently he, you know, they released all of the information on this injury, which is rare for a team, and I give them mad props for it. But I can't believe I just said mad props <laughs> in the air. Mad Who props. am I? Um, anyway, I give them mad props um, for doing that, because most of the time teams don't. But they said that, he injured in week 14. And I wonder, why did he play weeks 15, 16, and 17? Because they weren't going to make the playoffs. Pretty sure they had been mathematically eliminated by week 16, if not definitely by week 17. He played all three of those weeks. And I get not wanting to do a surgery if you don't need it, especially on a quarterback's throwing soldier, throwing shoulder. But, I like, so I'm fine with the, trying the rehab. But why play in those last two weeks? Make us think I want to trot Derek Anderson out there on the field. It's too depressing. Who can blame him for, for that? Carolina to Panthers be fans to deal with. Kaepernick, right. possible destination for Carolina as the backup. 
if Newton, actually if Newton's recovery. Yeah, I mean, he he has to go to a read option system. The only time he ever flourished was in a read option. So you're looking at teams that run that. You got the Bills, the Seahawks, the Panthers. Who else? The Dolphins try to a little bit, but Tannehill's not that mobile. Yeah, not a lot of teams do it. Yeah. So honestly, that's a that's a good rumor to float. And you know what? They've got cap now. Like everybody left. Like everybody. Yeah. Ted Ginn's out. I just heard. And I think Philly Brown. Yeah, Philly Brown is also out. Um, they lost a corner too. I think they they've released got a, Mike Tolbert. Yeah, they released Mike Tolbert, which is upsetting because I love his <laughs> touchdown celebrations. But I mean, he's essentially a fullback who got paid like a running back, which is a terrible move if you're an NFL team. Yeah. Don't overpay a guy like that. So, yeah. I think, yeah, Kaepernick could be the fallback option. This is, regardless of whether there's any possibility of it actually happening, let's start floating this rumor. Let's get the rumor going from this blog, then when Adam Schefter's tweeting about it. You heard it here first. Yeah, everybody heard it here first. Yeah, I like that. All right. Um, What else? Should should I talk some more about the little John promos? If if you if you want to keep your rant on Little John going, no, I think I think I'm good with the ridiculous. What? <laughs> what? Turned down for LeBron James leading the Cavaliers to another championship season. <laughs> yeah, I, I we don't need to yeah. discuss Little John. We're good on that. Right um, so we've made it to our favorite time of the week. No, my favorite, oh, not God. always yours, because you know, fifty fifty. You know. All right. 50 50 is a horrible percentage. <laughs> we call it the lock of the I week. Meant, I, I meant know. how I meant. You, you know what I meant, okay? <laughs> Stop it. All right. Lock of the week. Are we doing a Sweet 16 special or any game this week? Uh, we should probably do a Sweet 16 special. All right. I like that. Sweet 16 one special. Sure we'll win, right? We want to say you can't pick one seeds or anything can happen in the Sweet 16. Anything can so. happen. Yeah, you're Sweet right. 16. Anything can happen in the Sweet 16. You can go first. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah putting you on the spot. I haven't been wrong yet. Let me think about the Sweet 16 matchups in my mind. Uh, you know, I would call Arizona, but I almost think it's too much of a lock that people aren't going to respect it. Um, other than that, UCLA-Kentucky is going to be a really interesting game. I'd take Kansas over Purdue, but who knows? Kansas plays small with Josh Jackson at the four, and Purdue plays huge with those two bigs down low. Swanigan being the better, of course, but that what's that other guy's name? Pur- Purdue. Purdue? Their other big guy. Oh, I don't know. They got another, like, seven-footer. He's a big dude. Uh, and he plays well, too. But he gets overshadowed by Swanigan, who's incredible. Um, so you know what I'm going to go? I'm going to take the Wisconsin-Florida game, which is going to be a good one. Going to be a barn burner, I think. I'm taking it as my lock of the week, and I think it'll be, like, the – one of the closest games. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going with my boy Nigel Hayes. I called it early in the show. He's going to be this year's Shabazz. This year's whoever you want to say, Adrian Payne. Yeah. That's my boy, and I'm sticking with him. Nigel Hayes taking the Badgers. Go Badgers. <laughs> That's my horrible Wisconsin <laughs> accent. Um, well, my lock of the week, you talked about Arizona. I'm taking Arizona. Too easy. I can't even remember who they're playing, to be honest. I'm just taking them. Because they're that good. Who are they playing? Oh, Xavier. Xavier? No, they're playing Xavier. Xavier. Yeah. You know what? That's Xavier's Xavier's on a roll. They're on fire. I don't think they have the answer for for Lori Markin. I think they got the answer for every team in the country. And the answer's name? Bill Murray. Who doesn't love seeing Bill Murray in all the games? They flash him way too much on the screen, but they did it during the World Series, too. Look how that played out for the Cubs. Yeah. Well, you know. Ghostbusters? <laughs> right? Ah, uh, never seen that. You've never seen Ghostbusters? Oh, my God. How are you going to drop a bomb like that on me in the middle of our show? Yeah, You've never seen Ghostbusters? That, that might be the end of our show. Well, you've never seen Ghostbusters before. Yeah, you Sorry. know what? No, you're done. No. Get off the... All right. <laughs> uh, I had a couple other things to talk about. I'm frazzled. 
Uh, listener of the week this week is um, last week's listener couldn't call in, unfortunately. But it's a segment we do every week. We pick a random listener. Could be you. Follow us on Twitter for a chance to be the listener of the week. And uh, this week's listener is, uh, looks like, at Naggy2Swaggy, with a 2, on Twitter, uh, Jimmy Naggy from Cleveland, Ohio. Next week he'll get a chance to call in, talk about his favorite sports teams or whatever he wants to talk about. Hopefully he doesn't ask us about the Browns. Um, They're trash. They're trash, (laughs) but I love them. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Dog pound for a while. They're running backs, though? They're good. They're good. They're yeah. decent. No, seriously. Duke Johnson Jr. is one of the best backups in the NFL, and Crowell balled out last year. They've got some good receivers, too. Andrew they Hawkins is. Prior, they did. But Andrew Hawkins is serviceable. They got Kenny Britt this offseason. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty big acquisition. And um, Corey Coleman looked really good yeah. last year until he hurt his finger. And, I mean, if he can keep that up, he's a great college player. And uh, Gary Barnage, a tight end. Yeah. So they got offensive weapons. Unfortunately, they got thrown the ball yeah, to them. They need to find that answer. Yeah. Brock Osweiler, by the way, not the answer. I hope they pick Deshaun Watson. Yeah. If they pick Deshaun Watson, it'd be interesting. I w- Here's what's going to happen if they pick Deshaun Watson. Obviously, they've got a huge sunken cost in Osweiler. They have to give him a shot to start. He'll play four games, play like trash, and then Deshaun Watson comes in and Maybe not. Does what he does. Yeah. We all well, know. Unpredictable. Yeah, that's unpredictable. It could be. You know what though? Like Johnny Football is basically the same thing there, and people trash him, but he wasn't that bad. He might be the winningest Browns quarterback in like the last twenty years. <laughs> no joke. Like I think he probably is. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, shout out to the listener of the week. Shout out to Sauce Castillo as Sauce. always. I think we're good. Yeah. Good podcast.